If you've had any encrypted encounters that you'd like shared on here, email me at jttosstories at gmail.com. Story 1. Back in 1989, I was with my boyfriend, his best friend, my older sister Angie, and about six other people. We had spent the entire day mudding in the Royal Palm Mud Flats in Royal Palm Beach, Florida, aka part of Palm Beach County. I grew up in West Palm Beach. I had never seen anything like this before or since. After mudding all day, we decided to call it a night and leave. Almost everyone was gone by then, so we all piled into Eddie's truck and left. Eddie, my boyfriend, saw a small mud hole and drove through it as one last hurrah for the night. We got stuck. The small hole was deceptive. When I say we got stuck, I mean we were stuck. For hours. I was pregnant with my first, so I was steering as the other nine were pushing. The truck didn't budge. We had no choice but to wait until morning for someone to come pull us out, as we were now on our own. At about 5 a.m., we decided we should just relax and try to sleep until someone came through. Eddie, I, and his best friend were in the front. My sister and the other six, who we are still friends with to this day, piled into the back and started to settle down. We were still making noise when I heard a sound. It was a rumbling growl. I knew immediately that it was some type of animal, so I told everyone to hush and listen. Then we all heard it, and it was getting louder and more aggressive sounding. Eddie has a KC light behind his seat. He popped out, grabbed it, plugged it in, and lit the night up. That's when our world changed. Ten of us had a world rocked in a way we could never have expected. This thing ducked down and moved. Everyone was starting to freak out because it was clearly there, but what was it? Then it got mad. This thing stood straight up, let out a roar that I can still hear 31 years later, leapt the large bush it was standing behind and charged us. You could feel the earth literally shake with every running step it took. It was easily 8 to 9 feet tall. It was broad. It looked like an extremely large man with hair, not fur. It had hair and lots of it. The KC light lit it up, and you could see the clumping of the hair. The smell was rotten and sour. Being pregnant, I was extremely sensitive to smells, and it was bad. We had spent hours, we were talking five plus hours, trying to push this truck out. They say adrenaline gives you super strength, and they're right. Eddie turned on his truck and started pushing on his doorframe. His best friend leapt out his side and did the same. My sister and the six others let out screams as they piled out, and then all you heard was this thing running and roaring. Everyone else was dead silent as they put everything they had into pushing this truck out. With a sucking pop that I can still hear, we were out and they were throwing themselves into the back as Eddie and his best friend jumped in and he floored it. This is woods with tight turns and we flew around those turns. It felt like the devil himself was chasing us. After we got out and onto the main road, we headed for a gas station to calm down and call our families. When we got there, we all got out, sat with our backs to the wall, and that was it. We never said a word to each other, just silence. I think we were too raw, scared, and in complete shock over what happened. This was lore. This wasn't real. They don't exist. Yet there it was. After we all called our parents, we went home one by one being dropped off, not a word spoken. My sister and I did not discuss this until about five years ago. We finally opened up about that night and slowly talked to the others. 25 years after the fact, and every single one of us that have spoken about it had the exact same story and memory forever burned into our minds. It wasn't cool, it was scary. I think the reason we couldn't talk about it for so long was because our brains were in denial at first, and we didn't know how to open up about it. Now I can look back and say, oh my gosh, we saw Bigfoot. Story 2. I live in a small town in the Appalachian Mountains that you've probably never heard of. I'm young and only 15, so many people see me as an incredible source, and frankly I don't blame them. Kids lie for attention. I'm 5 foot 10 and weigh around 120 pounds. I'm very athletic and do many sports, and so is my friend in this story. I live on 300 acres of land 
and 250 of those acres are pure woodland. I've grown up hunting and fishing, and I could ID an animal from a mile away. It was pretty late in the season, so me and my buddy decided to go deer hunting. We walked around and tracked deer for most of the day without trying to take a shot. We were sitting on a hill, and a six-point buck walked right into a clearing to where I had a clear shot. I went to arm my crossbow, but I realized I left my ropes back up at the house. I told my buddy to just sit and wait while I ran up and got the ropes. It took me a good five to ten minutes to get them and get back. On my way back down the hill, my buddy met me halfway. He was obviously spooked, so I asked what happened. He said, and I quote, There was some guy sitting in the tree line watching me in a ghillie suit. My first instinct was to go look for the guy who spooked our deer and was trespassing. Bigfoot was the last thing in my mind right now. So we followed what we assumed was a hunter from 100 meters away for a good hour or two. It was ending close to dark when we lost the hunter. So we decided to cross the road and head up to the field for a last attempt at getting a deer. It was a good mile walk to the top where the tree line, and then we sat down and took a break for a while. Chatting about the upcoming wrestling season and if I was going to join or not. Then something started moving out of the tree line a good 70 meters away. Me and my buddy jumped up and I took aim. We waited for a few minutes, but nothing broke the tree line. It was getting to be almost pitch black out, and we could barely see anything. That's when something small and black came out of the woods towards us. I say small, but in reality, I mean a decent-sized bear. So me and my buddy started backing up slowly and yelling. The last thing we wanted was to mess with a mama bear with cubs. The black thing stopped and didn't move. We backed up a lot more. My buddy pulled out a flashlight and started shining at the black thing. I have poor eyesight and didn't have my glasses on. My buddy started to worry and kept saying, That's not a bear man. That's not a bear man. My buddy started to panic and scream at the thing. Then he ran a good ten feet towards it and screamed and banged on his chest. This caused the thing to stand up. It was almost like a man going from a crouching position to standing. This made me and my friend freeze. I didn't know what I was looking at, or what my friend just made angry, but if I were to guess, I'd say it was a good 7 to 8 feet tall, and it looked like it weighed 500 pounds. It was extremely dark at this point, so all I saw was its outline due to the sun setting behind it. This was the most afraid I think I've been ever in my entire life. Whatever the thing was, it triggered a primal fear response in me that just screamed, Run. My buddy broke my trance when he started sprinting. The thing started sprinting towards us two. I ran the hardest I've ever ran in my life. I'm a track sprinter and I can run decently fast. That thing was toying with us and could have easily caught me and my buddy. We didn't stop till we were in my bedroom. I didn't hunt the rest of deer season. I don't know what that was. Maybe it was a Bigfoot? This wasn't too long ago, maybe seven or eight months? My dog has been staring out the window for the past three months. She's going on seven months old here soon. I'm starting to think maybe they both are connected. I've never really been afraid of animals, but I feel like that thing's out there, and I don't want to make it angry. And I definitely don't want to be caught out there alone with it. Me and my friend saw a bipedal creature that night, and I'm terrified to see it again. Story 3 So, my father likes to frequent the sports club of the local university, where he teaches to run and exercise. It is a large sports area with swimming pools, soccer, basketball fields, etc. He still goes there every now and then. This place is at the exit to the next town and close to where we live. He goes there walking and cuts the way along a trail that goes up a ravine, passing beside a large eucalyptus plantation. Through this shortcut, you can avoid walking half a kilometer uphill to the main entrance. A lot of people use this shortcut, including local employees. One day, he went for a run a little later than usual, at around 6.30 p.m. About an hour later, the sun had already gone, and there was just a few more minutes of daylight. He was exhausted, so he re- decided to return home by the same shortcut as usual. This would not be much of a problem, since the full moon was high in the sky, and would give light. 
When he reached the edge of the woods, he noticed a figure in the middle of the trees that looked like a horse inside of the eucalyptus enclosure. He first ignored it and kept walking, thinking if he should try to communicate about it to someone who might be around. Mind that this place is surrounded by farmers that own horses. He kept walking, but started to feel eerie, as if someone were watching him. The feeling soon became stronger, a few more steps, and he realized that the horse was walking alongside with him. So he looked again between the trees and saw that it was hiding behind one. He thought that was strange, a horse hiding. Also, it managed to stand facing the tree between them. He just shook it off and continued on the trail. He was already halfway down, but the unsettling fear was increasing. So he looked at the horse again, and as his eyes adjusted to the darkness, he could see it a little better. Now it didn't really look like a horse, because he saw the animal jump from behind a tree to another. By the way it jumped, it looked to be a very tall and strong person. He stopped in shock and stared at the animal, still behind the tree, and noticed something swinging. What he previously thought was the horse's tail now looked like a man wearing a long coat, but the darkness and shadows of the branches were too confusing to figure it out. He decided to ignore it and move on, thinking that maybe it was just his imagination. He kept on the track, but at the end of the trail, there is a point where his path and the path where the animal was would cross each other. He started to freak out and decided to go back to the field and take the avenue. So he started walking back, paying close attention to the animal. He even thought it could be a friend trying to scare or make fun of him. Going back towards the field where the lights were on, he could better see its silhouette. A massive, muscular thing, hunchback, apparently covered in thick fur and what seemed like pointy ears in its head. He stopped in disbelief, but the creature kept walking towards him, not worrying much about hiding anymore. That's when his blood ran cold. The animal was approaching him from the side, as if it wanted to trap him. He tried not to run in order to display confidence and avoid attention, so he fast walked back towards the field, distancing from the trail, when he took a last glance. The thing was there, still lowered in a bush on all fours like a gorilla. It looked like a large human dog thing. When he and the creature were about a hundred meters apart, my father ran to the main entrance at the avenue, and relieved to see that the creature did not follow, he came back by the avenue, still on high alert, scared out of his mind. Now every time he goes there, he makes sure that he doesn't stay past dusk.